Hey everybody, we are going to take a few minutes today and go over our primary video rig. So last year we decided to make the switch from our GH5 rig, which we had been on honestly since it came out, to the much uh, loved Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. So far, that jump has been awesome. We've loved it. First up, I'm gonna let you know, we have uh, a speed booster and the Sigma 18 to 35, a super popular lens and for good reason, it is phenomenal. It's probably our go-to lens most of the time, but we also have several of the tiny little Olympus lenses uh, that are micro four thirds. So if you wanted to save money, I honestly think you could probably get um, the 25 millimeter little Olympus lens. It's a great lens, it's only a few hundred bucks. Um, and so really you could be up and running for under $2,000 easily. The, the first thing you're gonna need to think about with this camera is battery. Everybody says this, it is a battery drain, like unlike any camera I have ever had. When shooting, I get like 30 to 40 minutes, maybe. That's like, if I'm not recording constantly and maybe not in 4K, but if you're recording 4K raw on this camera, um, you're getting 20 to 30 minutes, it's not enough. Uh, so we already had some V-mounts that we were using with our GH5s, and so um, we opted to uh, get a little plate that connects on to the, um, the cage. These batteries are, are pretty good. They're, um, I don't know what brand they are. I'll, Juice, they're juice box brand, Dane says. And uh, we've had them now for several years and haven't noticed any dramatic shift in how much charge they can hold, which is really cool. Love being able to just charge four batteries and this battery right now powers this entire rig, which is really cool. At the end of a shoot or if you have multiple days, especially if you're traveling, to be able to just charge this battery and know that you're good to go is really cool. It's an in initial investment, but overall it keeps the cost lower because um, we haven't had to replace any batteries or get extra batteries as they drain, minimal chargers, all of that kind of stuff. If you're going to get any V-mount plates, we have had issues with juice box batteries fitting some of the third-party uh, V-mount plates out there, just be aware. Basically, the way we have this battery connected to our overall rig is uh, with a just a small rig cheese plate, and um, this plate that screws onto it, it's called head, it's from Headbox. Um, you have different uh, D-tap outputs and they make um, a built-in power cable for a lot of different cameras. So uh, if you are using any of the popular ones out there, whether that's, you know, Sony cameras or even the, the smaller DSLRs, um, it will have uh, options for power to go directly out of this plate. And then you have USB and D-tap options. Um, we love having this to be able to just pop this on and off and turn on off the rig is really great. It meant we could run cables and keep them all nice and tidy, which is important to me. So yeah, Headbox, great product. Been really happy with it. I think it runs uh, about a hundred bucks, but it depends on which which cable connection you need. From there, obviously on the camera, we have the small rig. Uh, we did the half cage. Um, we just like the feeling of this grip. It's just really contoured, it's more comfortable. And so um, we decided to do just the half cage and I'm really glad we did. Uh, I think it's just easier to hand hold uh, when you do need to uh, than to have the, the sharper metal edges on your hand. That also connects to a small plate underneath, which allows us to have um, some rods and, and things like that. Um, I like it has this uh, NATO rail system on the top so that we can throw a handle on there. So far, I think the half cage over what I've seen is, is definitely the choice to make. Monitors. Boy, we have had some monitors. We actually, this is the small HD Focus 5. Um, bang for the buck, I don't know that you can get a better looking monitor than this one. We used to have the Atomos Ninja V's, 5's. It was really tough for us. We couldn't fine tune the color. You couldn't run color profiling 
on it. So even though it output great recording, the actual screen quality of what we were looking at was terrible. So we always felt like our white balance was off or maybe our, uh, our actual contrast, we couldn't tell if we were too contrasty, if we were overexposing, it was, it was just messy. So we, we had that for a while with our GH5s just because we could record at a higher bit rate. But once we moved to something that could do that internally, uh, we wanted to go back. We were on these originally. We wanted to go back to the small HD 5 focus. I, if, I'm telling you, you need to buy this monitor. <laughs> they make a big brother to it, the small HD focus 7. Um, also, uh, apparently people love that a lot. It was bigger than we needed it to be, and so we opted for um, the 5. And uh, we actually ended up saving money switching. And so, uh, really nice. If you don't need uh, an external recorder, I'd go with it. A couple things to point out. Reasons people don't like the small HD is that it has this kind of proprietary input. I don't know, we haven't had any issues with it, but I'm sure people have. And so people go so far as to saw that off of there. <laughs> I'd, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, the cable isn't that expensive. It's 20 bucks, I think. So um, should something happen, I think we would just order another cable. Uh, and then we use this little um, Sony NPF dummy battery to go to DTAP to power it. Reasons why I think we needed this. External monitoring like this, uh, we like more. It's brighter than the built-in. Blackmagic one by quite a bit. We've noticed when we've shot just looking at the screen on the actual pocket camera that it's really dim. We, If it's sunny out at all, it's almost useless. We can't really see what's happening. This is, I believe, an 800 nit screen, which is pretty bright, um, especially if you get a hood or anything like that. We haven't needed one. We haven't really used one, but you, I've definitely used this in the sun and you can see. Uh, I, I really like it. That's one main reason. Uh, color accuracy, things like that. Even though you have a lot of great control with the pocket camera, I think you just get more of it uh, with the small HD. Um, and so we, yeah, we, we love having an external monitor with this camera. Of course, being able to do any kind of actual articulating with the screen is nice. And so we have this little small rig monitor mount as well um, that just screws onto the handle. So we, we love it. Latest addition to the rig is the Tilta Nucleus focus system. Tilta Nucleus Nano, Tilta Nucleus N. The, the perk of this is that you can calibrate to the lens that you're on so that it knows the distance from the closest focal point to the farthest focal point. And that way your adjustment is essentially always the same to go the same distance. So we, we ordered some of these and our first set didn't work at all. And we were looking, I mean, we did everything we could to try and learn what was going on. We ended up giving up and returning them and decided to go back to manual. That was almost it. And then I watched, gosh, I watched too much YouTube, <laughs> too much YouTube on these systems and everyone was literally using them on this exact rig. And so we knew it wasn't a power issue or anything like that. So we did another order. We thought, let's give it another try. And second time was the charm. They've been awesome. Uh, they can be quirky at times, but overall they've been really consistent. To be able to record start and stop points so easily, to be able to calibrate quickly on, on lenses, um, to be able to um, take this off and convert this to now a focus system on say like a gimbal, or we have a, like a director's rig where uh, somebody watching the video feed can do the focus pulling. Um, to be able to do that without really having to change anything else um, is a game changer. And so it costs just almost the same as a manual system. I really encourage you to try it uh, and see if, see if your experience uh, matches ours. I think you'd really like it. Overall, this rig is heavy. There's no doubt about it. We could probably get uh, smaller batteries and have a lighter rig, but the truth is normally we shoot like this. And so we, we like some of that handheld shake and the weight of this system overall makes that a, a better experience visually for sure. I definitely would encourage you if you're going to be doing any kind of longer shooting 
sessions with this to think about, and you still want that handheld look, think about some kind of support. Um, we found monopods to be a great way to still maintain some of that handheld look, but not have to hold, uh, I don't know, 20 pounds. One of my favorite things about this rig build out over a lot of other camera rig systems that we've had in the past is its ability to separate the camera from the rig itself. Let me show you. I needed this tool. The ability to de-rig this system is really, really simple and, uh, and also really, really convenient for, I, I think largely for traveling. Um, we just took a, a trip and one of the things we needed to do was to get some B-roll of the city. Well, specifically, we were in New York. To have to bring our whole case of gear or lug this thing around town uh, would be an absolute nightmare. Um, and so because we have the half cage, de-rigging is really simple. We actually just have a screw on top, which I will do. Maybe we can speed this up, Dane. You don't have to, but maybe we could. Okay, just watch this Okay, so this is it. There's a screw on top, a screw below, and we did it this way on purpose so that essentially this can just slide out of the rig. Now, of course, it helps if you detach all the cabling first, but that's it. It's that simple. And then, especially if you have any of the smaller lenses, it just makes the rig even smaller. You still get a huge screen. And because this plate actually connects to the power source, not, it's not a battery replacement. Um, it actually charges the internal battery every time this is connected. So that means that when I now take this and power it up, it is fully charged and, and ready to shoot. Um, it uses LPE6 batteries, which is great because then I just toss a couple extra of those in my bag for uh, traveling and I can just have this when we're on the subway and need subway shots without intimidating a crowd of people. You've heard me say a couple of times that we record internally. Um, another big topic with this camera is what recording media did we wanna use? A lot of people like coming out of the camera with the USB-C into little Sam, the little Samsung um, solid state pieces that in the rig, they make rig components that'll hold that and all of that, but we were really trying to minimize this rig as much as we could in terms of cabling and complexity. And being that we had just come from a GH5 system where we had to use external media and could use internal media, all of that was just kind of messy. And so we knew CFAST is here to stay and any camera system we're probably going to use in the next several years um, is most likely going to have a CFAST option. And so we opted to go with CFAST. Um, there's not one in here. There it is. Uh, these are the Angelbird CFs. Um, we went with the 256 gig versions. Um, shooting in Blackmagic RAW uh, actually gave us about the same amount of space on these cards as our 500 gig solid states did previously. And so uh, really impressive stuff, black magic. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, a full rig that uh, breaks down pretty easy and can record in raw, in the palm, in the pocket of your pants. That sounds, that's a weird, but this thing being called a pocket camera is, that's kind of, I get the old one made sense. And I get that it's small, but <laughs> like, unless we're going back a long ways into like cargo pants or like Jinko pants, if you remember Jinkos, those pockets could probably hold one of these. Having a camera that's just a cinema camera, it's not also a photo camera is, even though it, I guess you can snap pictures, but it's not designed to do that. Its entire menu system is laid out just for video. Um, having quick access to things like false color and zebras and focus peaking, LUT preview, all of that stuff with just a press of a button is huge.
uh, having full presets that pertain to video as well is, is great. Uh, I know just being a, a huge proponent of a camera like GH5 uh, and the GH5S and, and any of those types of cameras, um, I know that they shoot beautiful video that can easily go toe to toe for the most part with this camera. Um, but the overall experience, the speed at which I can solve problems while I'm doing video work is night and day. That was a big, I would say perk uh, coming over that maybe we downplayed before we actually got the camera. But at, since having it, it's been one of the bigger things we've loved about it. We'll also be doing a full pros and cons of Final Cut to Premiere, that switch, but or, I would never switch to Premiere. Resolve is, is great. And I think that if you're looking at getting into a, an editor or maybe stepping into something that's a little bit more of a traditional nonlinear editor like a, a Premiere Pro, consider Resolve. Try it. They have a free version. Do a few projects in it. Watch a few videos in it. And I promise you um, what will seem daunting at first will become easier and easier and it will get better. This video is not sponsored by anyone. We made it because there are a lot of people in our similar space. They might do video work or need to start doing video work and want to know what is a rig that I can do, that I can get that will shoot really professional level quality video. I think this is one of the best setups that you could consider. It all in all, for this exact setup, cost less than probably less than four grand for sure. And that $4,000 for the level of quality that you're getting and shooting with this is uh, astounding. Uh, consider it, it comes with the studio version of Resolve. So if you get that together, that knocks another few hundred bucks off. Um, I hope that this video was helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments, like, share, Subscribe. We're going to try and make more gear videos in the coming weeks uh, and months about each of these components, maybe even more in depth and how we use them and how we get proper coloring and exposure and everything like that. Thanks.